Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Brenda. I do all sorts of knitting related content on this channel. And today's video is a pretty regular basic knitting podcast. That means I will be showing you what I've been working on lately, my latest finished objects, my work in progress pieces, and some future projects that I'm planning on casting on next and working on next. So yeah, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, first of all, before we actually get started, I would like to say a big thank you to all the love you've given my previous video. I was absolutely blown away by your love and support. And in case you don't know what I'm talking about, in that video I have basically recreated a cardigan I had seen on Pinterest first. And it turned out to be the Gaspar cardigan from Cezanne. I fell completely in love with it the moment I saw it on Pinterest. I decided to recreate it, make my own version of it instead of buying it from the brand for various reasons that I specified on in the video so i will link it up here in case you want to check it out in case you haven't seen it yet and yeah it was just so rewarding to see you guys love something i had put so much time and effort into creating and it definitely keeps me motivated to keep making these type of videos and yeah just a big thank you to all of you but now let's get started with this video we're actually staying on topic a bit longer as the first thing i'm about to show you is what i just talked about my recreation of the gaspar cardigan i just realized i have been wearing my glasses the entire time i hope the reflection in them wasn't too bad anyway keeping it quite short here as Again, I have an entire video dedicated to this project, but just some general information on this. So I basically drafted my own pattern for this, but in that previous video, someone commented that there is actually a pattern on Ravelry that looks pretty much exactly like this cardigan. So I will also make sure to link that down below in case you're interested in that. I knitted my version in Lana Grossa Cashmere Verde, which is 100% cashmere yarn. Now, I'm gonna be real here, this cardigan ended up being more expensive than the actual cardigan from Cezanne, but um, you know, I knew that going into this project, so that's fine with me. Um, in my video, I also had listed some uh, more affordable alternatives, so you can go again, check that out. I will stop talking about that video right now. Um, yes, so. Lana Grassa Cashmere Verde was really nice to work with. I enjoyed the process a lot. For cashmere yarn, I would still say this is getting really heavy. I'm just gonna put it up here. Cashmere Verde comes in around 90 meters per 25 grams and it costs around 12 euros. It also, I believe, depends on where you're buying it because I believe it's no longer in production or, or they will stop producing it sometime soon. So you might um, get a good deal with this if you're interested in purchasing it. Hello. Hello, this is my my chair. You can have it later. Fine. Okay. Super. Okay, someone decided to join us. Um, excuse me, can you not? I would say for cashmere yarn, that is more on the affordable side. I can only really compare it to Cardiff Cashmere Classic as that's the only other cashmere I've ever used. I would say in terms of quality, it's still really nice for the price you're paying. Um, the Cardiff Cashmere, I believe, costs around 15 or 16 euros per ball. So yeah, it's slightly more expensive. Um, although I do have to say that I feel like remembering it, I did like that one a bit more. Then I liked this one. Um, I don't know, it just kind of felt more luxurious. And this one, this one is still really nice though for the price. So I'm not complaining here. It's really just personal preference. And and yeah, it just, it just has kind of a different feel to it. Other than that, I didn't really have any issues with it except for two things that bothered me slightly. First of all, this color specifically was shedding like crazy when working with it. I really could only work with it at my my little working desk. Um, I did not take this with me on the couch or sometimes I knit in bed. Could not do this with this. Everything would have been covered in fluff. So I decided not to do that, which was a wise decision. And yeah, the only other slight inconvenience I also mentioned in my last video was that I feel like the lighter color was 
a bit thinner like the thread itself um, compared to the darker one and you can sort of see it in like the overall cardigan as a knitter you probably do notice these things a lot quicker than other people who don't knit so it's not like a major issue with this yarn um, I think it's fine it's just you know obviously you're paying a higher price so you would expect it to be of a lot higher quality but um, yeah it's fine it's nothing nothing that would stop me from using this yarn again also the shedding did stop once it was blocked so that's also fine it was really just an issue when working with it in case I haven't mentioned it yet which I don't think so the lighter color was shade number two and the other one is color number 13 in terms of pilling I can't really say anything about that yet because I've only ever worn it for the video so far and um, yeah, I just it's just been sitting in my drawer basically. It falls right around the corner and I'm really excited to wear this to the office a lot. All right, next up we have the camisole number nine, which is a pattern by my favorite things knitwear. I would say she's one of my all-time favorite designers. I just feel like I resonate a lot with her style and just the pieces she creates are elegant and timeless and classic. And this cardigan I'm about to show you is pretty much the exact opposite of what I just said um well what can I say I got carried away when I saw that color in the store so I knitted this in Lana Grossa Sottile this is shade number 11 it is a lovely 85% cotton and 15% merino mix and I enjoyed working with it quite a lot if only that wasn't this one tiny little thing that bothered me I would be speaking more highly of it as it is some sort of chained cotton yarn i believe that's what you call it and it's filled with merino yarn i hope you can see what i'm saying here so there's multiple really thin cotton threads and if you're not careful enough you can easily stab through them and stabbing through them you're pulling out threads and you can't just zhuzh with it as the queen herself used to call it um <laughs> Like, you know, when you accidentally pull out a stitch on like a knitted garment and you can just zhuzh it around so you kind of fix it magically and the stitch just kind of gets back into shape. You know what I'm talking about, right? Well, you can't do that with that yarn. It's the pulled out stitch is just going to stay there like that. And that's really annoying. It happened to me quite a few times when knitting this. Um, I was able to sort of like pull the thread to the inside again with a crochet hook but you know it's still a loose thread just on the inside so it's not visible on the outside anymore but it's still there and it's still bothering me quite a bit but other than that it worked fine it's also lovely to wear as you know the mix of materials is good it's nice to wear outside the pattern is worked on three millimeter needles 2.5 and two millimeter needles so it definitely took me some time to finish. I've, I've been very optimistic in the beginning. Um, you know, you work it top down, you begin with the straps. So they work up pretty quickly. And, um, you know, the rest is basically just once you connect it under here. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but like at the armholes. Yeah, you're just knitting stocking it in the round. So it's nothing difficult. It just takes a while. Um, and even though it's a summer top and even though I didn't, I think I made like the smallest or second smallest size, it still took me a while to finish. I can't really say anything on like how long exactly it takes to make because I'm definitely not a monogamous knitter. So I kept like knitting on it, putting it aside, picking it back up. It was a whole process. <laughs> I would say overall, I've probably been working on this for about two months but yeah again at some point I definitely abandoned it didn't look at it for a while and then picked it back up so I'm glad I had the strength to finish it actually I'm really glad I did it um, I don't know if I would do it again even though I kind of wish I had made this in like a navy color or black maybe uh, as I feel like I would have I would have worn it more often um, compared to I think I worn this like once or twice only this summer um yeah i just don't know if i see myself knitting this again maybe at some point but not in the near future <laughs> other than that i can 
really say that this is my most professional looking handmade garment I own at the moment and um, we love that you know we love a good polished professional looking piece I'm really enjoying that so I don't know what I'm doing with my hands but um, just ignore that I like it and there's not really much more I can say about it so let's move on to the next one another pattern by her the sweater number 28 I feel like I talked about this in my previous knitting podcast um, but you know that's it's been a while so let's just talk about it a little more as it's just beautiful i knitted this sweater in patagonia by juniper moon farm i've had an eye on this yarn for a while and i can definitely say it was not the last time i have worked with this it is a hundred percent organic merino wool and even though it is merino i wouldn't necessarily call this a soft yarn so you can't really compare it to like a sunday by sun yarn or you know like a superwash merino yarn it's nowhere near that soft but i actually love that i think it's comparable to the knitting for olive merino that one is also not your typical soft merino yarn but it's definitely still a nice yarn to work with you know it's like a good sturdy yarn don't get me wrong i still wouldn't call this a rustic yarn necessarily but i it's just not a soft yarn or like a super soft yarn so it's somewhere in the middle i would say if you're really really sensitive to wool i probably still wouldn't recommend this to you but if you're like me and you are lucky enough to not be sensitive to wool um it's a great yarn it's you know one of those more durable sturdy yarns again i would say i do prefer those kind of more rustic yarns even though rustic is like a really like when i say rustic i don't mean rustic rustic i mean more like a not super super soft yarn so i'm talking noro ito um rowan felt a tweed sunless garn pure gint that's my jam <laughs> so the pattern tells you to hold your main yarn with a strand of mohair which i decided in that case to just skip the mohair because i i don't know i just felt like it i was like i'm gonna try this and see if i like the tension the gauge everything the look of it without mohair and you know if i don't i can always unravel it and um, get more and get more yarn and hold it with that so I decided to try it and I I'm really happy I did because I I love it I you know I don't always necessarily need the fluff don't get me wrong I love a good fluffy sweater but um, in this case I just I feel like I've been working so much with fluffy yarn and like yarn held double with a mohair um, that I just wanted to spice things up a little bit and just skip the mohair I know scandalous <laughs> I was just really happy with the way the Patagonia looked on its own. I was like, I'm going to try this. And if I don't like the tension or the look overall, I'm, I can always go back and get more yarn, get more hair and just add that, you know. Um, but yeah, I always feel like um, mohair just adds so much to the price of a sweater. In this case would have been crazy because the mohair on its own would have cost me more than the actual yarn and so i was like okay let's just try it without the mohair so there are exactly three hangs of patagonia in this sweater I had just enough yarn to finish it i feel like i would have been happy if i had like one more um one more part of that ribbing section but it's fine overall i still feel comfortable in it it's not like it's super cropped or anything it's still a good length and the yarn for that cost me around 42 euros if i had added mohair to it it would have cost me around 98 euros so that's quite a difference i usually like adding mohair when i feel like it's doing something for me like if i can go up a needle size or if i feel like the fabric on its own without mohair is just too gappy but in this case, again, I really liked it. I also feel like it bloomed really nicely after blocking. Anyway, I can only repeat myself here. I will definitely work with this yarn more in the future. Um, I'm thinking maybe a red cardigan. We will see. <laughs> the next finished object is actually two finished objects. And one of them is the one I'm wearing right now. I'm talking about the Claude top. 
This one is my own pattern and it's currently being tested by a lovely group of test knitters. I cannot wait to see all of their versions of this top. I'm super, super excited about it. Let me tell you some details about it. First of all, I wish I had chosen a different name for it. <laughs> this is really stupid, but I... Okay, here's a little lore behind the Claude top. I feel like it sounded a lot better in my head, but now every time I say it out loud, I'm like, ugh sounds really stupid um anyway so a few months ago the lovely kate from peacock yarn sent me a request and asked whether i wanted to do a little collaboration with her and of course i said yes so i was looking at the yarn on her website as she wanted to send me some so i could design something with it obviously and um yeah that one colorway just kind of stuck out to me it was so beautiful and i fell in love with it even though I usually don't ever go for something as warm toned and as intense as this. Um, that's a lie. That was a total lie. I do like intense colors. It's not what I would usually go for. I usually try to stay away from colors that scream warm toned as much as this one did. But for some reason, I felt really attracted to the color. It's I saw it and I felt like that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. So I had to get that color. And the colorway is called Grain Stack and it's part of her Claude Monet collection. So that's the lore behind the name of this top. And uh, I don't know, it just sounded so cute in my head. Like, oh, cute little French name, Claude, Claude top. Um, yeah anyway of course i had to knit up a second sample of this top so i could write up the pattern just so i could improve the initial prototype um but again it's still pretty much the same look just a few details have changed i made a solid color version which i'm really happy with i used lana grossa elastico this is color number 12 and it's a really nice 96% um, cotton and 4% polyester mix and it's been really nice. I have worn this top out a lot since I made it, even more than my camisole number nine, even though I didn't have this for as long. Um, anyway, I just feel like the fabric, both of them actually have been really nice, even at like really, really hot temperatures. I don't know, I just didn't expect to like this one as much as I do, maybe because it's just not as much of a fancy yarn as this one obviously and uh, let me tell you it is actually quite different from the first sample um, i'm speaking of the material itself so it's a lot more stiff i would say not necessarily in a bad way but it's definitely not as much of a flowy fabric as the bamboo i used in the first sample i'm going to talk about it in a second yeah it's definitely more of a sturdy material but it does still feel really nice on the skin and the first sample I have worked in, again, Peacock Yarn. And this was her DK Bamboo Yarn. It comes with 250 meters per 100 grams. And I used two hanks of this. So I, um, yeah, needed a little bit less than 500 meters for this top. I didn't mention it's worked on four millimeter needles. So it's a pretty quick top to knit. And again, the color is called um, Grain Stack and it's from the Monet collection. It's a very lovely yarn. I can only recommend it. Kate is a really lovely person. She does so many beautiful colorways. Just have a look at her website and um, I will definitely link her down below. I had never worked with a yarn like this up to this top and um, I can definitely say it's, it's different from working with merino wool or just wool in general. Um, bamboo is very silky smooth, very flowy, even, you know, the finished object itself is just a really nice material. I feel like silky is the best word to describe this. Um, yeah, it's just, it has a really nice glow to it, a really nice flowiness. <laughs> By the way, I'm not being paid to talk about it on here. Um, I was just gifted the yarn for designing purposes, but yeah, I just really like it a lot. And uh, the last finished object I will be talking about today is my little top I had made to wear to the Eras tour. And what can I say? 
it was one of the best nights of my life definitely it still feels so surreal i can still not fully believe i was actually there it was amazing truly mesmerizing yeah <laughs> so i was in kind of a weird spot with my outfit i had seen so many amazing costumes made by others on tiktok and instagram for the eras tour and i was like wow i want to wear something handmade as well but at the same time i knew that if i were to really dedicate a lot of time and effort to, to making a costume for the show i would only really wear it to that one concert and I would never wear it again most probably so i decided to not go super crazy with it i wanted it to be really sparkly but also be the most minimum amount of fabric possible as it was like 30 plus degrees celsius outside at the same time so i decided to go for the look at my holds pattern by jameson watts who is by the way also a youtuber um, i will link everything and everyone i mentioned down in the description box below so check that out for more information the yarn i used for this top was rowan creative linen which is a 50 percent cotton and 50 percent linen blend and it comes with 200 meters per 100 grams so it was good for a four millimeter needle and then i paired that with a sparkly yarn which is brillino by lana grossa i'm sorry it's an italian name brillino and um, yeah it's a thin sparkly yarn and i used two balls of each so two hanks of the rowan yarn and two balls of the sparkly yarn yeah unfortunately i don't have the finished piece with me anymore as i gave that away already but I have pictures. Unfortunately though, the sparkle isn't really showing on pictures, so that's really sad. But I promised it was sparkly. You're gonna have to trust me here. It was actually perfect for the concert. It was still very, very hot, but I still had the greatest time nevertheless. So there's that. I just realized how stupid I looked with the mic, so we're gonna hold it like that again. Okay, let's move on with some work in progress pieces. I'm going to start with something I believe I had mentioned in my last podcast, which is the Amy Slipover by Sant Nisgarn. I initially started this as kind of a mini knit along with two of my friends and they both finished their Amy Slipovers while I was pretty much struggling with the tiny needles um, or maybe it was just a lack of self-discipline. But anyway, I just didn't really see a future for that amy slipover anymore and so i decided to frog it it was it, it's just been sitting in my drawer for way too long and i started feeling bad for the yarn as it's a really nice yarn um it was not nice to unravel it let me tell you unraveling rowan alpaca classic is no joke crazy shedding felting I hated it. I even had to throw away quite a bunch, so that was really sad. And now I'm left with this yarn. So what's the plan for this yarn, you may be asking yourself? Well, I don't really know yet. It will most probably still become a slipover at some point, as I just don't have a sweater quantity of it. But I will most likely also hold it together with some other yarn. Maybe a mohair, maybe something thicker. I haven't decided yet i will also just set it aside for now and maybe pick it up again in the winter it's just not what i want to work on right now yeah i don't know what pattern yet i might have an update for you in the next episode so stay tuned next whip i hope you cannot hear my washing machine it's like really loud right now um anyway next whip is a self-drafted sweater which will potentially turn into a pattern, I don't know yet. I'm just not 100% sure whether the world really needs another top-down raglan basic sweater with a slight variation. Um, let me know, please. As you can see, I have knitted the body already. It's it's quite cropped, I'm not gonna lie. It is, it is slightly cropped. Um, but I have tried it on and it looked fine with my high-waisted jeans. I only ever wear high-waisted pants, so it's fine for me. Um, you know, if I would turn this into a pattern, you can always add more length to the body. Let me tell you what yarn I'm using. For the main part, it is the most beautiful Noro yarn. I, I am a sucker for Noro yarn. I love it. I could spend all my money on Noro yarn and I would be 
the happiest person on earth. Um, this is Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo in color T81. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it so much. It comes with 300 meters per 100 grams. And uh, I use this for the main part of it. Paired with Lace by Lang Yarns, which is one of my all-time favorite mohair yarns. I will insert all the colors on the screen because I don't have the... I don't have them with me anymore, but yes, it's it's a really nice combination. I decided to pair the Noro yarn with a mohair because at some points it's just slightly spun more uneven. And so the mohair, again, does something for me. It evens out the yarn. I don't know if you can see this, but at some point here, because it's not evenly spun, it has some thicker parts and some thinner parts and you know it happened so to be that one of the really thick parts of the yarn is exactly in the center front of the sweater isn't that nice <laughs> it's bothering me quite a bit i'm not gonna lie i don't know what to do we'll see i don't know maybe i'll just leave it and not think about it too much but yeah at the bottom, we have Isaga Twinny, color number 25. I'm holding that one double and I'm holding a mohair to it as well. One strand of it with a mohair would have been too thin. And so I'm holding it double with a mohair. And I'm working this on 4.5 millimeters and 3.5 for the ribbings. I've been wanting to work with Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo for the longest time. I could never really decide on a color as I just love all of them. And yeah, I just really, really love Noro. It's always a pleasure to work with. It never gets boring. You always have this... Well, it depends on what Noro yarn you're using. But the ones I've used so far always had a really nice variation in color to them or like a tweedy effect. And yeah, I love it. It's just really nice. You know, the plan is obviously to add some sleeves and also add those checkers to the sleeves as well. And I think it will look really cool. I cannot wait to pick it back up again and continue working on it. And um, I will do that as soon as I have finished my next whip. I am talking about the Maya Sweater V-neck by We Made Wardrobe. They are two lovely designers also from Germany and they are doing this Maya series at the moment and I completely fell in love with it. The moment I saw it I knew I had to apply for this test knit and luckily I got chosen. So they have a Maya sweater round neck, a Maya cardigan and this Maya sweater v-neck. So yeah they're pretty basic pieces but at a fairly large gauge which is one thing that caught my attention. The other thing which you cannot see with my work in progress piece at the moment but it's I believe it's called a slip stitch I still have to get to that point in the pattern but yeah it just looks really nice and really professional and I cannot wait to finish this and wear it in the winter and fall for this project I'm using three different yarns held together one of them you might recognize if not I'm actually worried about you um, it's Isaga Twinny again, correct. And I'm holding two strands of mohair double, which is what the pattern calls for. Um, the pattern doesn't tell you to use two different shades, but I decided to go for that just to make it look a bit more interesting. For the mohair, I went for Prolana Kitseta, which is 70 mohair and 30 silk. It's a pretty regular mohair. It's 25 grams and comes with 210 meters. I have already worked with this mohair before and it does shed a little bit, but I do think that they have a really great color selection you can choose from and the price is also pretty good for the quality you're getting. I think it costs around 9 euros. And yeah, compared to like a Rowan Kid Silk case, it's definitely, it's definitely quite a difference. I believe the Rowan one costs around 13 or 14 euros, so it is a difference. The colors I went for are 43 and 49. Again, the pattern doesn't really tell you to use two different shades of the mohair, but I decided to go for it because I feel like it creates an interesting effect. It's not really marled, but it's... I just feel like it gives it a bit more of depth and 
adds a little interesting detail to it. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with my color choice and I cannot wait to wear this in the fall and winter and spring. I feel like it's a pretty versatile piece as it's a, again, a pretty flowy material. You could wear like only a top underneath in the fall and spring time and maybe pair it with a turtleneck underneath in the winter to just make it a bit warmer. I'm really looking forward to wearing it. I feel like I should mention also there is not a specific release date for the pattern yet, I believe, but I will link everything down below and you can um, follow them on Instagram. They have a lot of great designs. I'm definitely a fan of their work. You can just follow them on Instagram and they'll update everything there. Last work in progress piece for today is a classic. I'm sure most of you have at least heard of it, if not already made one. It's the Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit. For me, it's the second time knitting one. I decided to switch it up this time as I just wasn't happy with my first Cumulus Blouse. I decided to not knit it in a beige color. I don't know why I did that. I've just never been a beige person. It's crazy to me that I thought, yeah, beige, that would look really nice on me. It doesn't. It doesn't. I look like a dead person wearing beige. Darker colors are definitely more my thing. And I also decided to knit it a size up, which would be, I believe, a size small. I had made a size extra small the first time I made one. I also didn't go down a needle size, which I did the first time, because so, so my gauge is slightly off actually, which will make it even bigger, um, which is exactly what I want. So that's, that's good. <laughs> also, my first one I did knit up in Drops Kid Silk Mohair, which don't get me wrong, it's a good yarn if you like start out with knitting, but if you're more of an experienced knitter um, and you have the budget for a better quality yarn, I wouldn't go back to the Drops Kit Silk just because I feel like there's so much better yarn out there. For example, one of my all-time favorite mohairs, Rowan Kit Silk Haze. This one is definitely... On the pricier side, it's again around 14 euros, I believe, if not more. I don't think I mentioned yet. I am using color number six, 641, which is, I don't think it's picking up on camera. I would be very surprised. It's so hard to take pictures of that yarn. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice burgundy kind of eggplant like a reddish purple. I can't really think of any better words to describe this. It's an interesting color to say the least. It's beautiful and it's really, really nice and soft and it doesn't shed like like many mohairs do. Um, yeah, I'm a big, big fan of this yarn and I love it. And I, uh, if you know, if I didn't have to think about money, I would um, definitely use it all the time. Yeah. That's all I have to say about this. And I also don't think I have to say any more, uh, anything else about the Cumulus blouse. I, I'm sure you all know of it. Congratulations, you've reached the last part of this video, which is my future knitting plans. I am so sorry if I'm being annoying because I keep referencing my previous video, but I have to mention it one more time. So I started this little series where I basically recreate pieces from fashion brands, bigger fashion brands, and um, started out with the, you know, Cezanne Gaspar cardigan. And I, of course, want to continue that series. So the next item I'm going to recreate is a sweater from Totem, which is a more high-end, luxurious designer brand. And um, yeah, it's a pretty basic sweater. It's a black and white striped turtleneck sweater more oversized and I have made a little swatch for it. I used Isaga Spinny this time, not Twinny, it's Spinny. And I held that together with lace from Lang Yarns. And I believe I knitted this on 3.5 millimeter needles. Yes, it's a very tiny gauge, um, but I think that's just gonna make this entire thing look 
more professional and more store-bought which is kind of what we want here and i'm happy with it i think this will look really good this is actually not the not the super white yarn they do have one that's more that's like more white this is actually more of a light gray with some black black fuzz kind of spun into it i don't don't know how to explain it i'll just you can see it on screen i'm really excited about that project and i had so much fun creating filming that previous video that i am really looking forward to starting this um yeah right right after i finished the test knit i think i will cast this on so yeah this will be more of a slower project definitely but i am super happy to just give it the time it needs and give it the love it needs to grow <laughs> i don't want to get any further into detail here you will see everything in the next video i will take you again with me on the entire process don't you worry so stay tuned for that and you know again subscribe to this channel if you haven't already so you're not gonna miss out on this now going back to the patagonia yarn i was talking about earlier i also want to make a cardigan for myself using that yarn it's gonna be a pretty basic piece i want it to be a basic piece that's just gonna make it really versatile and something i can just grab at any time and will match most of my clothing items so it will be probably a top-down raglan cardigan um it will look probably similar to the cardigan number seven by my favorite things knitwear i have i have also knitted that one before and yeah i don't want to make it at such a large gauge so i'm planning on using maybe 4.5 millimeter needles and hold the patagonia together with a mohair and i will most likely use rowan kid silk haze with that color wise i still haven't decided yet it will probably be either a really nice dark gray or a really nice deep intense ruby red one of those two things what do you think i should do let me know in the comments please i will make sure to insert some inspiration for the cardigan here um just so you know what i'm kind of talking about as i don't have anything to show you yet but yeah that's definitely at the top of my um knitting plans for this winter and the last thing i want to mention in this video you, I, you can probably hear my voice is getting kind of crispy raspy I'm not used to talking this much in a session, okay? Um, I need to film these videos more often. So, last thing I want to mention in this video is the Mixed Rib Camisole by Florence Miller, who is also a YouTuber. She uh, does um, knitting podcasts, mainly, I believe. Um, and I enjoy watching them a lot, so I will make sure to link her down below. She's also a really good designer she's made a couple of patterns already and i have recently purchased her mixed strip cami which i had also applied to test it for but sadly didn't get chosen which you know i was kind of disappointed but anyway i have purchased the pattern once it came out and i'm not 100 percent sure yet whether i should cast it on right now or wait until next summer you know i'm in a weird spot here it's kind of the end of summer already it's mid-august and i just don't know it's worked on three millimeter needles so it's definitely gonna take me a while to finish and i'm kind of leaning more towards uh no i should wait until next summer but i've seen the most beautiful version of this camisole on Ravelry in like a really, really beautiful, cool toned, darker brown shade. And now I'm convinced I need this and I need to start working on it immediately. I don't know what to do. So here's the plan. I'll be going to Berlin in a couple days for a few days around my birthday. And obviously I'm planning on going to certain yarn stores. Um, how could I not? And I decided that in case I happen to find that specific color in Knitting for Olives Merino yarn, I will get it. It's only three balls. It's not much, right? So if I happen to find it coincidentally, I will get the yarn and I will cast it on. 
And you know, as I'll be knitting this in merino yarn, I think it should be fall appropriate as well because you know it's gonna still keep me fairly warm even though it's sleeveless um but i could i could pair it with a with a cute little blazer and that would look really nice at the office i just feel like it has this really professional look to it and so i do think that i could pair it with a cute little blazer to the office you know I'll keep you updated on that. By the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram already, you should totally do that. It's at petricore.knitwear. And I definitely post more regularly on there, so you should totally check it out. Hello again. Um, I hope you can see me. I... <laughs> What a journey this video has been. So my phone died multiple times on me in the process of filming this video, um, you know, due to a lack of storage. And yeah, it's, it's now several hours later and I'm just going to end the video right here. Thank you to everyone who's watched up to this point. Um, I will link everything I've mentioned down below and don't forget to watch my previous video. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment your thoughts down below. I would love to know all your thoughts on everything I just said. Um, thank you so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye! I decided to pair this with a mohair. Sag mal, du kannst doch nicht gegen die Kamera laufen. Hallo? <laughs> I decided, girly, don't. Don't. The Noro yarn tends to be... Oh my god, you can hear her walk. Can you stop walking, please? <laughs>